My wife had an affair with her gym trainer, and during our divorce, she demanded half of everything. But what she didn't know was that my dad secretly owned our house and savings. Never did I think I'd be sharing this here, but life has a funny way of turning out. I'm 38, working as an accountant for over a decade now with the same local firm. I've always prided myself on being a practical and level-headed guy, which is probably why I've managed to stay calm through everything that's happened. My wife, Joyce, is 35. We've been married for six years and don't have kids, which in hindsight, feels like a blessing. Joyce stopped working after we got married. She used to be in marketing, but once we tied the knot, she wanted to take a break and focus on our life together. I was okay with it as I made enough to support both of us, and I assumed it was only temporary. We had a house and some savings, not extravagant, but enough for a comfortable life. Joyce spent most of her time at home, but recently, something had shifted. It's hard to pinpoint when exactly I noticed the change, but she became distant. Her outings with friends or trips to the gym grew longer, and her affection dwindled. Whenever I asked her what was wrong, she'd get defensive. Initially, I chalked it up to stress or a rough patch in our marriage, but over time, I couldn't shake the feeling that something more was going on. Sadly, I was right. One evening, Joyce was in the shower when her phone buzzed. Out of habit, I glanced at it. It was a message from someone named James. At first, I didn't think much of it, but something about the tone caught my attention. Can't wait to see you tomorrow, babe, it read. My heart sank. I unlocked her phone, and what I found confirmed my worst suspicions. She'd been having an affair with James, her gym trainer, for months. The messages were explicit, leaving no room for doubt. They were even planning a future together, a future without me. I sat there, stunned, staring at the screen. The person I trusted most had betrayed me, but instead of rage or heartbreak, I felt nothing, just numb. Maybe it was the shock, or maybe it was my practical side taking over, but I knew everything was about to change. When Joyce stepped out of the bathroom, I calmly handed her the phone and asked her to explain. At first, she tried to brush it off as a joke, but when I started reading the messages aloud, she knew the truth was out. Then, without a hint of remorse, she simply said, I want a divorce. No apology, no sign of guilt, just a cold, matter-of-fact statement. She admitted she had been with James for a while and wasn't happy with our marriage anymore. She didn't sugarcoat it. She was leaving me for him. What floored me even more was what she said next. Without any hesitation, she started talking about splitting our assets, demanding half of everything. The house, the savings, all of it. She even had the audacity to claim she deserved it since she'd given up her career to support mine. I couldn't believe it. Still, I remained calm, possibly because I had already emotionally checked out, or maybe because I knew something she didn't. I stayed calm, maybe because emotionally I was already done, or perhaps because I knew something she didn't. So I agreed. I told her if she wanted a divorce, I wouldn't stand in her way. She could have half of what she believed I owned. She seemed surprised, probably expecting me to argue or break down, but I wasn't going to give her the satisfaction. What Joyce didn't know, and what I didn't feel like explaining, was that most of our assets weren't in my name. Years ago, my dad, a very smart man, suggested I put the big things like our house and savings under his name. He thought it was a good way to protect myself in case something ever went wrong, whether it be debts, lawsuits, or, as it turns out, a cheating spouse. At the time, I didn't think much of it. It just seemed like smart financial planning. So, when Joyce demanded half of everything, I knew she wasn't going to get what she thought. On paper, I didn't own much, just a modest bank account, my car, and a few small personal items. The house? Technically, it belonged to my dad. Most of our savings? Also under my dad's control. Rather than drag things through a long, bitter court battle, I suggested mediation. I thought it would be easier and cheaper for both of us. She agreed, likely thinking she was about to walk away with a significant portion of my assets. But what she didn't realize was that this setup with my father had been in place for years. Honestly, I had almost forgotten about it myself until the divorce talk started. My dad's foresight ended up being my saving grace. The house, along with most of the investments and savings Joyce had her eyes on, technically belonged to him. 
I had always lived with a low financial profile in my name, modest enough that even Joyce never questioned it. As soon as the divorce process started, I filled my dad in. Of course, he wasn't happy about the situation, what father would be, but he understood the importance of keeping things quiet. We consulted a lawyer to make sure everything was airtight, and as it turns out, it was. Joyce could demand all she wanted, but there wasn't much in my name for her to take. Joyce didn't waste any time. She hired an aggressive divorce lawyer, the type who promises to take everything they can. Meanwhile, I hired a quiet, experienced lawyer who specializes in cases like mine where finances are complex. I wasn't looking for a big fight, but I also wasn't going to let Joyce and her lawyer steamroll me. The first step was the asset disclosure, where both parties have to reveal what they own. As you can imagine, this didn't go as Joyce had hoped. I laid everything out just like the law required. But when she saw how little was actually in my name, I could see the confusion and frustration on both her and her lawyer's faces. They were clearly shocked, maybe even suspicious, but there was nothing they could do. I wasn't hiding anything. I simply didn't own much of value. That's when Joyce lost her temper. She started yelling, calling me names, accusing me of lying. But like I said, I had given her everything I had. After all the shouting and accusations, I told her we could continue the conversation when she calmed down. And now, here I am, turning to Reddit because I'm unsure if I handled things the right way. So, Reddit, am I wrong for agreeing to give her half of my assets, knowing she wouldn't actually get what she expected? Update. Things have gotten more intense. After the asset disclosure, Maria was in complete disbelief. She kept accusing me of hiding money, and her lawyer wasn't any better. Their faces, when they saw the modest figures, were priceless. It didn't take long before they demanded a deeper investigation. Maria couldn't stop asking where the rest of the money was. After all these years of marriage, she assumed there was more to divide. She was stunned that, after all this time, there wasn't much to split. Her lawyer quickly hired a forensic accountant, convinced they'd uncover hidden assets. At first, I was nervous, not because I had anything to hide, but because I knew it would drag out the process. However, after discussing things with my lawyer and reviewing everything again, I realized there was nothing they could legally find. Everything I declared was 100% true, and the assets in my dad's name were untouchable. As the investigation unfolded, I could see Maria growing more frustrated. She was so used to getting her way, but this time, there was nothing for her to claim. It seemed like she just couldn't believe that she was walking away with so little. Maria then shifted her argument. She claimed she had made significant contributions to my career and our lifestyle by staying home and managing the household. She argued that because she took care of things at home, I was able to focus on my job and climb the career ladder. While I won't deny that her help was occasionally beneficial, it wasn't as if I was running a massive corporation. I'm a mid-level accountant, and my job has been steady for years. There wasn't any major boost in my income that she could link to her sacrifice. Still, she kept pushing this narrative, saying she gave up her career in marketing to support mine. But in truth, she hadn't worked for long before deciding to stay home. A decision she made on her own, without any pressure from me. Her lawyer repeatedly brought this up, trying to paint me as someone who unfairly benefited from her sacrifices. But there was no real evidence to back it up. At one point, they even tried to drag my parents into the case. Maria wanted to prove that my parents had secretly given me money or helped me hide assets. This infuriated me because my parents had nothing to do with this mess. It was a low blow, but fortunately, my lawyer quickly shut that idea down. By now, it was obvious that Maria was becoming desperate. As the divorce dragged on, Maria took matters into her own hands. When the courts didn't give her what she wanted, she decided to try to destroy my reputation. She began telling everyone in our social circle that I had hidden money from her and that I had been financially abusive throughout our marriage. I was stunned by the lies she was spreading. Mutual friends would tell me how she kept going on and on about how I was leaving her with nothing. She even took to social media, posting vague but unmistakable comments about narcissistic partners and betrayal. Naturally, some people believed her. There are always those who side with whoever seems to be the victim. 
But most of our close friends knew me well enough to see through her act. It was frustrating to watch her attempt to tarnish my reputation simply because she wasn't getting what she wanted, but I refused to let it bother me. I knew the truth, and so did the people who mattered. Besides, I had bigger concerns like ensuring she didn't take more than she was entitled to. While Maria was busy spreading lies, I was preparing myself for the next steps. I remained in close contact with my lawyer, making sure we had all the evidence needed to back up my side of the story. I kept meticulous records of every interaction with Maria, every demand she made, and every time she tried to make me look like the villain. I knew that if this ever went to court, having proof would be crucial. I also began gathering evidence of her affair with James. While infidelity doesn't always impact divorce settlements, I wanted to make it clear that she wasn't the victim she pretended to be. I had screenshots of their texts, pictures they took together, and even statements from friends who knew about the affair but had stayed silent. It wasn't about shaming her, I just wanted the truth to be known. At the same time, I started bracing myself for the fallout. I knew that once she realized she wasn't getting the big payday she expected, things would get ugly. So, I focused on my work and life, keeping my distance and staying prepared for the next phase of the divorce. One surprising twist in all of this was James's reaction. When Maria initially told him she was leaving me for him, he was all for it. They had this fantasy of starting a new life together. But as the divorce got messier, James began to backpedal. It turned out he wasn't as committed as Maria had hoped. From what I've heard, he started getting cold feet once he realized that being with her might come with financial baggage. Maria had been counting on a fresh start with James, but he wasn't ready for that level of commitment. He even started losing clients at the gym because of the scandal. Apparently, people don't want a trainer with a reputation for getting involved with married women. Now, James is distancing himself from Maria, and she's realizing her dream life isn't what she thought it would be. I almost feel sorry for her. Almost. But then I remember everything she's done. As for me, I'm torn. On one hand, I'm relieved. I'm glad I protected my assets and that Maria isn't walking away with what she expected. But on the other hand, I'm sad. This was my marriage and there was a time when I truly loved her. I had believed we would build a life together. Watching it all crumble like this is hard, even though I know it's for the best. Things have escalated since my last update. Maria's desperation is really starting to show and not in a good way. She's realized that she won't get the payout she had envisioned. So now she's trying to make my life miserable. Her latest move? Threatening to ruin my career and my reputation at work. She told me that unless I made things easier for her, basically, giving her more money, she would ensure everyone at my firm thought I was a horrible person. At first, I wasn't sure what she meant by that, but it became clear soon enough when she started showing up at my office unannounced. The first time, she acted calm, pretending she just needed to talk. But when I told her there was nothing left to discuss, she lost it. She raised her voice, saying things like, I'll make sure everyone here knows the truth about you. Thankfully, I was able to get her out of there before it escalated further, but her behavior made it clear that she's becoming unpredictable. At home, or rather, at her temporary home with her parents, her behavior has been erratic too. After it became apparent that she wasn't getting a big payout, she moved back in with them. From what I've heard, things aren't going smoothly for her there. Her parents are supportive, but they're also unhappy with how everything has turned out. Even they seem to be seeing through her victim act. Some mutual friends have told me that she's been lashing out and getting into fights with her family, acting like she's on the verge of a breakdown. Update two, the legal side of things has gotten even more complicated. Maria's lawyer is trying every trick in the book to dig up dirt on me. They've filed motions to subpoena my parents' financial records, even though my lawyer has explained repeatedly that their assets aren't part of this divorce. It's an obvious attempt to rattle me, but it's not working. Maria's legal team also filed a motion to question my coworkers, hoping to find something that would suggest I'm hiding money or getting paid under the table. It's been exhausting, but I've stayed calm and focused, making sure they don't get more than they're legally entitled to. They keep throwing out accusations that I'm concealing money, but they're grasping at straws. Every time we think we've addressed one of their demands, they come back with something else. 
The whole process feels like a never-ending game of chess. Each move I make, they try to counter. Thankfully, I've managed to stay a step ahead, thanks to my lawyer and the legal protections my father put in place years ago. But it's exhausting, and I don't know how long I can keep this up before we actually end up in court. Speaking of legal matters, we've already tried mediation twice, and both times were disasters. The first session lasted about 30 minutes before Maria stormed out, still demanding half of the house and our savings. My lawyer explained again that the house was in my father's name and that there wasn't as much money as she thought, but Maria didn't want to listen. She accused me of lying and claimed the mediator was biased against her. The second mediation attempt wasn't any better. This time, Maria came in with a list of ridiculous demands. She wanted full ownership of the house, half of the savings, which barely existed, and six years of alimony. When my lawyer calmly explained that she wasn't entitled to any of that, Maria lost it again, yelling about how she had sacrificed everything for me and how I was leaving her with nothing. I tried to keep my cool, but inside, I was furious. She was the one who cheated. She was the one who wanted the divorce, yet somehow, she acted like I was ruining her life. It was unbelievable. After that session, it became clear that we were headed to court, whether I liked it or not. To make things worse, Maria has been borrowing money from her family and friends to cover her legal fees. She clearly didn't expect the divorce to drag on this long, and now she's running out of money. I'm not sure how she plans to keep paying her aggressive lawyer, but that's not my concern. The more desperate she becomes, the more erratic her behavior gets. Mutual friends have told me that she's been spending most of her time at home, venting to anyone who'll listen about how I've supposedly ruined her life. It's gotten to the point where even some of her friends are distancing themselves because they're tired of her constant drama and victim act. Everything she thought she'd get from this divorce is slipping through her fingers. Through all of this, I've done my best to remain calm and handle things strategically. Whenever Maria made a new accusation or demand, I was prepared. I countered every claim with evidence. Anytime her lawyer asked for financial documents, I provided them because I had nothing to hide. My lawyer has been fantastic at ensuring we follow the law to the letter, which is more than I can say for Maria's team. I've also worked hard to protect my parents' privacy. Maria's attempts to drag them into this mess have been frustrating, but thankfully, legal protections have kept her from accessing their financial records. It's clear she's desperate, thinking that if she digs deep enough, she'll find some hidden treasure. But there's nothing to find. Update 3. The day of the court hearing finally arrived, and the tension was high. Maria was the first to testify, and she didn't hold back. She accused me of hiding assets, manipulating our finances, and lying about how much money we actually had. She got emotional, painting herself as the victim who gave up everything for me, only to be left with nothing. At one point, she was even crying, saying how she trusted me with her life and was blindsided by the divorce and my supposed financial tricks. But then everything shifted. My lawyer presented evidence of her affair with James. Once the texts, pictures, and other details of their relationship were revealed, it became clear to everyone, the judge, the jury, and everyone in the courtroom, what was really going on. Maria's story of being the victim unraveled right in front of her. She tried to downplay the affair, calling it a mistake and saying it had nothing to do with the divorce, but by then, the damage was done. Her credibility was shot, and it was obvious her financial demands were rooted in greed. When it was my turn to testify, I stayed calm and stuck to the facts. My lawyer had prepared me well, and I knew getting emotional wouldn't help my case. I explained how the assets had been in my father's name for years, how I had provided full financial transparency, and how I had attempted to settle things peacefully through mediation. I also addressed Maria's threats, her erratic behavior, and the smear campaign she had been running against me. My lawyer presented all the evidence of her accusations, both in court and publicly, showing how baseless they were. We laid out the truth about our finances. The house belonged to my father, our savings were modest, and there was no hidden fortune for her to claim. The judge seemed to appreciate how straightforward I was, and for the first time, I felt like things were finally starting to go my way. I didn't try to make Joyce look bad, but I also didn't shy away from the truth of what happened. 
The facts were clear, and I presented them without exaggeration or drama. A few key witnesses were called, and their testimony helped solidify my case. First, my father took the stand. He explained how we had set up our financial arrangement years ago, how the house and investments were in his name, and how it was all part of long-term financial planning. He made it clear that these assets were his, not mine, and that Maria had no legal right to them. Next, one of my colleagues testified. Maria's lawyer had tried to argue that I was hiding income through under-the-table payments or secret bonuses. But my colleague shut that down quickly, confirming that my income was exactly as I had disclosed, just a regular paycheck with no hidden earnings. These testimonies were crucial in proving that Maria's accusations were unfounded. The judge could see that there was no secret scheme on my part, just a simple financial setup that Maria didn't understand. After days of testimony and legal arguments, the judge finally gave the verdict. It was a huge relief. The court ruled in my favor. Maria's demands for half of the house, and our savings were completely denied. The judge ruled that since the house and most assets were in my father's name, Maria had no claim to them. The only thing she was awarded was a small amount of alimony for a short period, just enough to cover her legal fees, not nearly enough to maintain the lifestyle she'd been hoping for. The judge made it clear that her affair and lack of financial contribution played a role in the decision. He saw through her victim act and ruled accordingly. As the verdict was read, I felt an enormous weight lift off my shoulders. All the stress, accusations, and fear of losing everything disappeared in that moment. I was legally in the clear. Joyce, on the other hand, didn't take it well. She burst into tears, yelling that the system was unfair and that I had cheated her out of what was rightfully hers. She stormed out of the courtroom, leaving her lawyer looking drained. It was obvious she hadn't prepared herself for the possibility of losing. For me, the overwhelming feeling was relief. I thanked my lawyer for doing an excellent job and left the courthouse. My phone buzzed with messages from friends and family congratulating me on the outcome. Word had spread quickly, and people were already talking about the case. It felt good to know the truth was out, and I could finally move on with my life. But Joyce wasn't done. Outside the courthouse, she had a complete meltdown in front of a small crowd. She screamed that I had lied and manipulated the system and threatened to appeal the decision. But she doesn't have the money for that. During the trial, it was clear she was running out of funds, and from what I've heard, she's still borrowing money just to get by. I can't express how grateful I am for my father's foresight and advice. Without him, I'd be in a much messier situation right now. I'm also thankful for the support of my friends, family, and colleagues who stood by me, even when Maria was spreading lies and trying to ruin my reputation. Looking ahead, I'm hopeful. I know it'll take time to fully recover, both emotionally and financially, but I'm ready to move forward. I've learned some valuable lessons from this experience, and I won't make the same mistakes again. For now, I'm focusing on regaining a sense of normalcy and enjoying the peace that comes with finally closing this chapter.